come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> ho, ho, ho. That was ho, the most lethargic. Ho, ho. Well, I was trying to get you guys to jump in. <laughs> that feels part and parcel with the way that... <laughs> I'm feeling right now. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. That's no, like, nothing? No, I feel like you're confused. Okay. Ho, 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 There we go. Ho, ho, ho. Right. This is really fun ho, ho. for the listeners. Yep. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast and Merry Christmas. Merry it's Christmas that time of year. Uh, we're a movie uh, talk show podcast. It comes your way every Saturday if you're ready for it or if you weren't. Uh, because we're trying to take over the world one podcast at a time, one podcast listener at a time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. I figured it out why we kept saying Holly. Why you keep thinking you're Holly? <laughs> yes, yeah. because you have been in the seat the last two times that has happened. And I think our mentally, I know I was ready to announce you as it was your pick. Oh, okay. Which is why I had you on the mind. But Michaela's done it too. Right, yeah. but that's because you were also, <laughs> the but she was sitting here and you were sitting it, in the pick wait, seat again. seat. So I think it's because it's, we're it? just like mentally prepared for Holly's pick. There it is. I and then we just, pick for Holly. I think you just mentally prepare for me at all times. <laughs> sure. You just stare at me and You know, it's Christmas and, and I'll let you have this gift. This is for you. Tis <laughs> the Christmas. season to be Holly. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, that's Yay. my name. No shit. Uh, all right. So who chose tonight's movie? Michaela. I really thought you were going to say Holly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, um, if I were a weaker human being, I would have. Uh, what do we watch tonight? <laughs> uh, curtains. Ooh, curtains from the, the curtains. year. 1983. 1983. Yeah. The Canadian curtains. Yeah, Canadian curtains. Or yeah. what is it? Cortinas? Cortinas. 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 Yes. Cortinas. Yes. Cortinas. Says it is on Which Amazon Prime. We should have watched I know, Cortinas. just to see if that was in HD. We watched like the worst possible copy of this movie. We watched the worst copy and then we flipped over to a worse copy. <laughs> yeah, which we <laughs> paid bad. for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. two dollars to watch a shittier version of this movie. <laughs> yeah. There is a, an HD version of it available somewhere. on disc, I think, mm-hmm. somewhere, but not streaming. And so, who directed this masterpiece? Richard Chupka, who, um, Chupka. directed half of it. <laughs> oh, okay, and then okay. Uh, had creative differences with the producer and left and said, "Don't put my name on it." So they took the. <laughs> the lead character's name Jonathan Stryker and just made that the director's name too <laughs> which makes Kinda for works. <laughs> not knowing that when you're watching it makes for a very bizarre experience that yes. the guy who directed the movie is the director in the movie or the character the director in it the movie it makes sense that yeah. makes more like, sense yeah it ended up working for him I think yeah it's kind of funny now well, yeah, like watching it's it without funny knowing that, watching it without that knowledge, it was very cringe. <laughs> yes. But knowing that, it's funny. <laughs> exactly. Well, the lead character, lead actress, mm-hmm. uh, Samantha Egger, mm-hmm. is like, what's her name? Samantha. Her Samantha. Something, I don't remember where her last yeah, name was. But it, it's, it's like it's her yeah. first name. Yeah. You know, so you're like, okay, Christian yeah. or something like that, or yeah. And so that I figured it's like, okay, fine. We'll name the director Stryker after the guy who directed it. But right. okay, it's an Alan no, Smithy an kind Alan of Smithy. situation. Yeah. All right. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a warning sign. Yeah. Great. Folks yeah. Ah, explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this movie, okay, Curtains, Curtains, did have some kind of like broad awareness because a lot of people seem to be aware of it. I was aware of it at a very young age because it played on HBO all the time it was one of those like there were few uh horror movies i think available in the early 80s and so i always remember like curtains was you know always being mentioned this is back in the era of the hbo guide remember that when you got the little (laughs) hbo guide um so it's been out there for a while it's canadian yeah it was so it was produced by peter r simpson who produced prom night and he wanted to replicate the success of prom night and so he started producing this movie, but he wanted it to be more aimed towards adults and not teenagers. And Richard Chupka wanted it to be an art house movie. Mm. So they were butting heads no over, shit. make a classic horror movie, make an art house movie. And I think that explains a lot about what we saw, uh-huh. right? <laughs> like, yeah. Because yeah. there's a lot it of does. scenes that mean nothing. 
Yeah. in this movie and that's very art housey to mm-hmm. just do things to do things but i wonder if some of those are the result of like a script change like somewhere you know i mean there uh, was this movie took like four years to make because really? of all the starts and stops it started in 1980 oh, <laughs> yeah. oh wow and didn't okay. come out until 83 so yeah and uh colin you asked d- during the credits it said act one and then it said act two later in the credits There's full credits yeah. for the act one and act and two because there was two sets of crews that worked on this movie because it happened over so many years. So it was like the first half of the movie. Thanks to these guys. The second half of the movie. Thanks to these guys. Is it actually uh, broken down in like delineate yeah. like first half, second half? Yeah. Of that's the movie? what the act one act two is. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if it was mm-hmm. just like we, the crew <laughs> came together and we got these scenes we needed. And then another, yeah, crew. is it, is it, Strictly cut in half as far as production as, wise, or as far it, as I could tell from what I read, it sounded like it. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Yep. Helen's gonna have that look on her face for most of going. Huh. <laughs> this, is a, this is a curious huh. one, then. Huh. Indeed. Um. It also had a three point seven million dollar budget, which seems like a lot. Where did it yeah, go? Yeah. 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 In in 1983 yeah. money, like that's a big it's budget a movie. Budget Where movie did then? it go? Yeah, because it's <laughs> not in this movie. It went to all the curtains, Holly. <laughs> there are a lot of there curtains. Were so many curtains. Yeah. It, it was a curtain prop room. Transitions. It built that prop room, that's and that was true. it. And there's curtain transitions curtain. Oh in this God. movie, which uh, I give them credit for that. That was kind of for as long as they were doing it. Yeah, and yeah. they stopped doing it in like the third act. That's, that yeah. wasn't cool. No, we need more yeah. curtains, and, but uh, we did at the end. So it's a uh, it's a movie about the um, Are you sure the theater world. We're saying right yep. that's what we're yes. going after in this. Uh, why it's curtains refers to uh, stagecraft. That's what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. We're talking about this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, Think of this as the murderous all about Eve, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? yeah. I like and that. I don't mean to put them side by side because it's not. <laughs> I was like, you it's fucking. Not, it's not do fair to anybody. Every time. <laughs> and I don't mean for them to be compared, but there's a certain level. Yeah. Of similar. And sprinkle a little Canada on top. And yeah, oh yeah, a little Canada movie. dry yeah. right yeah, on the top of that. There's definitely yeah. seasonings in Canada. <laughs> yes. Sorry, a, sorry. And it's a Canadian sorry. slasher film. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they're getting in on uh, you know. Well, actually, I noticed the composer was Paul Zaza, and he did a yeah. bunch of Bob Clark movies because those mm-hmm. are also. Well, he was Canadian. like the guy who cranked out like the most Canadian slasher films as as, as producer, I think, right? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, obviously, he directed Black Christmas, but Paul mm-hmm. Zaza also mm-hmm. did the music for uh, Christmas Story. You know, yeah. Right. Yeah. So he did all those. Um, okay, so this uh, movie stars who? Who's our lead uh, lead people in this? The boom mic. The boom. <laughs> Yes. Well, we watched yeah, because we watched the version one of them that we watched. Did the boom mic keep showing up yeah. in the second version that we saw? Yeah. No, it, we saw all well, boom mic before we switched over to Prime, and, and then, then we couldn't see anything. Well, then yeah. it just be, yeah, yeah, it could have yeah, been yeah. there. And then we couldn't see anything at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, so the, the version been front and center we because yeah. we we tried it on Fossum, right? The Fossum, awesome, and we tried it on Freevee, the former yep. IMTV, IMDb, but they had commercials. watched Tubi. Probably had the best one, and we didn't even probably, give it a chance. Right? Probably. Um, but when you see a boom mic in a uh, like a four by three frame, <laughs> that's generally not. Uh, a mistake even though it looks like it yeah. because uh, for you folks at home who are unaware of this and you're always pointing out the boom mics that's it's something called open mat mm-hmm. uh, because when those are projected that's you're seeing the whole 35 millimeter frame it's yeah. a square but in a, in when they would run these in the movies they'd actually put a little metal uh like aperture plate in the projector that would give it that four uh 16 mm-hmm. by 9 um aspect ratio and so you wouldn't see the boom mic mm-hmm. but we get to see it a lot, a lot in this too. movie because uh, nobody cared when they yeah. when they transferred no. this. It to doesn't like, help that it's like a yellow one too, so yeah. it really stands yeah. out. Like yeah. it's not the gray ones you're used to seeing, and like in this dark room, you just see this yellow thing bobbing around the top mm-hmm. of the frame. Yeah, and I'm sure the vinegar syndrome or synapse or whoever the I think hell it was put synapse this thing out, put it out. Uh, I'm sure fixes all that. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it looks like a <laughs> if we bucks. could find it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so who's in it? Uh, Samantha Egar who uh, is probably best known for The Brood. She was in that. Another and Canadian movie, right? David yep. Cronenberg. She's also in The Phantom. Uh, I, I don't keep... remember her being in That's the Billy <laughs> she, Zane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's been she, in, in like every TV show of the 80s and 90s since then, too. And she was also the voice of Hera in Hercules, the animated movie. So she's like oh. one of those like u- utility actors mm-hmm. that shows up in everything. Mm-hmm. It seems to me A like... Canada Workman. She mm-hmm. was... Because um, I know she was in, if I'm not mistaken, I think she was in Dr. Doolittle, the big like yeah. 20th Century mm-hmm. Fox, the old one, the you old know? One, yep. And so she was... 
kind of a Hollywood uh, star starlet that, you know, eventually this is like later life when they would do you know slasher movies and lower budget things. Yeah, so. everyone on set was like, oh my God, she's so famous when she was in this movie, basically. Yeah. She was the most famous person, you know, by a mile. Well, that's your yeah. get, you know, yeah. you got Samantha Egger. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and who else? Um, John Vernon. <laughs> John Vernon, uh, Lynn Griffin, who was in Black Christmas. Like, she's like the only other notable person I noticed. Oh, I, wasn't Michael Wincott in this for like a second? Yeah. So, Michael Wincott. He, I don't remember where now. <laughs> he was Matthew. Uh, the guy. That's right. right. Okay, Which is why I kept yep. pointing him yep. out because it's That's a Michael character yeah. who's like not in the movie. No, he literally rides out of it. We will see him right uh, away. Canadian jet ski. He yeah. rides yes. out. And- <laughs> He's introduced. He has no lines. I think he fucks some girl in the hot tub. And then yes. is he dead he, in the hot tub, or is that somebody else? I don't know. We couldn't we're tell. Gonna, we're gonna go no. over this later. But Anything. Michael Wincott, you would know from Nope. <laughs> yeah, that's recently, right. Yeah, Re- most recently, he's in nope, nope. Yeah, The uh, Crow yeah. and uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and all that. Wasn't stuff. he has yeah, got uh, some TV show for a long time? He was in Alien Resurrection. Uh, was he in Oz? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> was no. he on? He was on some HBO show or something. I thought. He's got that voice and yeah. that look. Yeah. And Fuck, I gotta look yeah. it up. It's good. For so me, he, I mean, for me, John Vernon is the most well known in this movie. Yeah, I think outstripping Samantha Edgar, yeah. even I because so. of, he was in Dirty Harry, Animal House. Yeah. like he was in killer tons clowns. of Killer Clowns, Spider Space. He's in tons of stuff. He's, yeah. he's also got that voice. He's doing a killer yeah. Orson Welles impression yeah. in this movie. Just anybody ever see? Uh, I'm gonna get you, sucker. Yes, yes. yes. Mister Big. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, yes. Great. Um, yeah, the mayor in Dirty Harry, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so Lynn uh, Griffin, right? Who you mm. said was in uh, Black Christmas, mm-hmm. which we covered on this show, and Curtains, which we covered on this mm. show, was also in Strange Brew, uh, which we covered on this show. Which is another Canadian movie. <laughs> and according to MF Mad, that uh, puts her on the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. So there you go, Lynn Griffin. Uh, you Welcome made it. Welcome. I always kind of liked her. I like her personality yeah. in, mm-hmm. in movies. Um. Okay, then beyond that, we're saying we don't recognize anybody else who was in the movie. I feel like I recognize Literally. faces, but I don't know who they are. Okay. All right. So, what is our inciting incident for our slasher film? Well, how do we get into this? What What's this movie about? What's going on? So it's about a bunch of actresses going to an old lecherous creep's house <laughs> to audition for a role in his movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's the yeah. Okay. And. The role is available because the star that was going to do it, Samantha Agar, is insane again. She had what it. Was her, she her, her, insane? her insaneness was acting up. Uh, yeah, well, they had they talked about how like, well, I think I hope she's fully recovered now and all that stuff at the yeah, beginning. But I hope she's all, relapse. So this is like a, the the movie starts out with uh, her performing on the stage yeah. for mm-hmm. um, for Stryker. the director Striker, mm-hmm. right, yes. uh, John Vernon, mm-hmm. and then. We cut to the mental institution where uh, she's being she's admitted. Going, she's going method. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't know that at this point because yeah. this no, scene yeah. is played. Uh, it was one of the best it's, laughs it's the best, that we had. It was it's the great. best well-played oh, yeah. scene in the movie. It was great. You're in the director's office, right? Like mm-hmm. for the admittance. And the director, a striker, has brought her in, Samantha. Yes. And she's very quiet sitting there. And Oh, yeah. They brought her to the mental institution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Like, yeah. With like the head of the institution. Right. You and seem he's fine. Kind of awestruck because, you know, he's seen her work. She's a famous actress. Yeah. And yeah, you seem fine. I thought uh, you'd be worse. And then all of a sudden she flies into a rage, tries to stab the, well, the, 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 best, the best part is because of what he says. He says like something about her acting and the director's like, oh, she's never going to act again. And she <laughs> she's loses like, it. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she'll never act again. She's like, what? That, oh, it was great. I will act. Yeah. <laughs> I will stab you with this pin. Yeah. I like the way that security doesn't run in or anything. It's no. like the, the director runs out. You know, not, or sorry, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the asylum director smart, smart. runs out, yeah. leaving... Uh, Oh, no, no, sorry. Security no, did come in and they put her in a straight jacket. Yeah. 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 Literally, the guys in the white coats come in. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I was, when we were watching this, I was like, in insane asylums, are they always just on standby like that? I yeah, I guess. So. I guess every movie yes. and show, they just like hit a button and they're there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, think they, yeah. I think you're specially trained for that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The orderlies are just there, ready and waiting. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. But this is the moment that we're, we're told that this is all a ruse. Right, because at this point... Um, the director is like, can I have a moment with her now that she's, you know, detained, detained in her straitjacket? <laughs> so that's when the director and the orderlies leave. 
and we find out it was all a ruse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she's going to go method because she wants this part in his new film. Audra. Mm-hmm. Audra. Mm-hmm. And so in order to get that experience, she's going to check herself into a mental institution. And so we get a lot of scenes now. I mean, now a thinking lot. about the totality of this movie, <laughs> how much time we spend on her acclamation oh to. Oh my God, it's so much. Yeah. There's. Uh, I was like, are we watching the right movie? Right? You know, like, I was I was like, we did a lot of scrolling and clicking to watch this. Maybe we hit the wrong thing because I was like, <laughs> I thought this was about an audition. <laughs> like, I actually was thinking, like, does, does the audition take place? In the mental hospital, like right. like they have an art audition. therapy right. or something right. in there. Yeah, they've got a theater in there. That, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, it's like uh, well, Titty Cut Follies. If you ever heard the legend of that documentary, but continue on. Look that one up, folks. <laughs> well, this uh, so you know basically, I think like the 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 abridged version of this is you know it's like through her experience. Uh, living with the crazy people of the mental institution, she will be able to relate to the character of Audra. That no, it's better. more than that. She starts to actually like go, oh, yeah. go crazy, yeah. right? Because mm-hmm. where there's, it's interspersed with scenes of Stryker, the film director, mm-hmm. coming in and and talking to her and like, mm-hmm. uh, like visitation day, yeah. yeah. And it's like you're just supposed to, you know, save this for the film. Don't go crazy on me right now. And she becomes more vacant, and more withdrawn. Yeah, as she says like on. that's survival in this place. Like the quieter yeah. you get, like that's she, survival. She's observing. So everybody. every time, every time he comes to see her, each scene she gets a little more like docile and a yeah. little more like vacant. vacant. Yeah, just, it does kind of feel like this is where scenes are missing yep. because. It feels like this is where for the well, just for the amount of resources that it feels like the movie spent on all these, you know, the, the extras and all the bits of business about like the woman who goes around tickling her for way too long. Yeah, oh my uh, god, that the was really other inmates who you know scream in the middle of the night and keep her awake, and then they're lobotomized. And I mean, this goes mm-hmm. on for a while. A while, it's like a, a like, short movie within yeah, a movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was really it uh, was... like something's going on, but then. This is what I was trying to wrap my head around because, I mean, I guess we got what happened, but it was so ham-fistedly edited mm-hmm. that we actually had to say out loud, like, did did he just pass her over for the, the part? How do they do it? How do yeah. They yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, she's reading Variety. And, and the headline is, Stryker it, finally does Audra. Finally does finally. Audra. Yeah. And we're like, okay, we were talking about this. She's going to be an Audra. Right. I don't, I don't yeah. It's the, supposed yeah. to be the moment that tells you he's moving on without her as she reads it. But it, do, we, it doesn't fully come across. It's like, yeah, we know he's. that's what they're trying to do. Right. Well, it took. I, I'm personally, it took me a little while. To, I'm like, I think that's what they're doing. Yeah. Is the movie going to back that up? And then eventually it did. But it was mm-hmm. like, wow, it's not clear really no. at all. Nope. Mm-mm. Um. So yeah, he, it should have been like Stryker ready to cast his new Audra or something. Yeah, like that. exactly. Yeah. yeah, this movie talks about Audra like we know what it is, right? Like right. this movie, I have a big. Pro- this is a big problem I have with this movie is that it, they say Audra like it's like, Ophelia, like it. Yeah, yeah. like it's this. <laughs> yeah. It's it is like a magnum opus that we're all yeah. aware of, and we don't need any further explanation because yeah. we get no further explanation. And even the actresses, they're like. What is Audra like? They keep asking him, like, what is this character supposed to be? And mm-hmm. he d- d- never tells them. And I feel like we need a baseline for what they're going for. And there's, at one point, like, one of the actresses is even like, I remember reading it when I was a child. Did you ever read Audra? Oh, the book, yeah. And I yeah. was like, what? Yeah. So it sh- we should know what this is? Right. Uh, yeah, apparently it's, a, it's a, a seminal piece of work that everyone should know in this movie. But yet, but yet they don't know what the character's supposed to be. Right. It or doesn't make any sense. Well, his interpretation. Yeah. Because yeah. they know that, like, she's, you know... They know uh, she's, like, unhinged. Yeah, because I think the first scene is that, that Samantha Agra is performing is, like, you know, if I believed in demons, I'd summon them to send your soul to hell something like <laughs> yeah. that before she shoots you know oh yeah i think yeah. it's her cheating lover or something yeah. like that i can't remember yeah. she finds him in bed with another woman yeah right yeah. and so um he's now moved on and so uh, the director he's going to make this movie but not with her and so he's going to cast one of six uh potential uh, actresses. Yeah, and it okay. seems like he recruits an actor, each actress who has a specialty. There's the the comedian, the interpretive dancer. Mm-hmm. Um, the specialty. F- <laughs> ah, that's what they're trying to say. They have an assigned 
uh, trait, I guess, yeah. like, to, to separate them. Yeah. yeah, what makes them different? Yeah, uh, I feel like, like the, I feel like the the people who made this movie had in mind like a ballerina, but then when they got her there, that's all she could do. Yeah, so they just went with it. And she's just like, I have something to admit. I'm not a ballerina. <laughs> I just I don't understand well, how all these different skills would be beneficial to this character. You no. know what I'm saying? Like, no, it makes like, no sense. It makes no sense. Like, why would you? What kind of role could possibly call for maybe a figure skater? Right, and C- also and he's very like yeah. adamant. He's like, did you bring your skates? Yeah, I'm like, what he are wants you there? to. See, he wants to see if these. <laughs> This is nothing. This is not the movie. <laughs> he wants to see if these actresses can access some part of their specialty that can be Audra, I think. He wants to see... Uh, th- 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 <laughs> this, is also just, this is also just a power play to fuck six women in a mansion. <laughs> well, like, that's yeah, it. Yeah, well, it he, he, yeah, it's true. And he does say something about, like, he is familiar with their work, I think. Yeah. Like, eventually yeah. when he gets some... Well, He's also treated as, uh, like an Orson Welles. Like, he is a... A, a, a genius. A ge- yeah, he is cinema. a genius, apparently. Yeah. And yeah. so these women, he, he uses this to uh, lord his power over these women. I hate um, this man. Yeah, I hate him. Yeah, and, I hate this. Yeah, and it's not really satisfactory <laughs> how we end up. But no, uh, I digress. Um, but and yeah, and so they're all um, trying to um, serve him in his yeah, genius. They very much at. lean heavily on like the well-known um, aspect of the casting couch. Yes, like they're very they much it. like yeah. this is how it works. Yeah. What would you guys do for this part? Oh, I'd yeah. fuck him. I'd, I'm like, seriously? Mm-hmm. Jesus yep. fucking Christ. <laughs> they lean on this so hard. Yes. And I hate it. And it makes, I mean, his John Vernon's portrayer, t- portrayal makes it very creepy, but that very, aspect Yeah, of I don't think this movie's like creepy. endorsing that idea. I think it's, I think it's saying it's a bad thing, but I, I mean, I, it's kind of interesting that like they were even making movies about this back in the '80s, and yet like Harvey Weinstein didn't go down until like five years ago. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's, That's like, what's even well, they said crazier. open secret. I yeah. mean, it's yeah. just, I think you know, it's a lot of those things when you say that you're against something, but you're living within the world of yeah, it. Exactly. It's yeah. kind of you yeah. know performative, I guess, right. in some ways. But um, you know, because obviously, <laughs> like the writers, I'm sure, like they're all living in this, uh, you know. Uh, the film world right so they're just kind of Canadian film like, here's an idea mm-hmm. for a movie mm-hmm. um yeah because he's basically treated as god his word is uh you know f- uh, f- set in stone he knows the 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 character and so these girls are then going to try and i guess you know satisfy his vision of yes. of what well, the character is which kind of, I mean, it just kind of, you know, it's like, we like movies, right? But I mean, I was listening to you guys and I kind of share this. Like, I really like the whole acting process and like all this stuff is like, uh, you know, really. Um, it can be very ridiculous. Yeah. 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 Very ridiculous. Yeah. In, in the places it's, some people will go. It's very self-indulgent and very yeah. just. I'm an actor. Yeah. 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 Self-important. I don't yeah. have, like, I don't have that desire to be that kind of center of attention. So I don't understand it. You know what I'm saying? Like the idea of performing in front of a large crowd, like that sounds awful. Like, see, so I can't under, I can't uh, connect with where see, they I come do. From. Like, I do understand it though. Cause like when I was in high school, I was a theater kid. I, I loved being on stage. And so I thought it was so much fun. But I wasn't like these motherfuckers, you know. <laughs> just always got to be putting it like, on. It was always got to be on. Like to me, I was like, it's pretending, and it's yeah. you know, like I don't know. Well, I thought in your it was case, fun. it'd be like I would, I'd fuck the pastor to get this part. Like mm-hmm. some of them are hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're introduced to all these women um, in little vignettes. Uh, as uh, so, th- I think this is also in dialogue, if I'm not mistaken, that Samantha Egger escapes from yeah. the asylum. We don't talking actually her, see this. Right. Yeah, she's talking yeah. to a friend who we don't end up knowing. Never, that saying. never comes back. No. no. It never comes back. We, we just, never see this friend, I think. You they're, know, so. they're just in a room where everything is satin for some reason. Yeah, and there's a mm. fireplace, and she's burning the photos of all the women the who are possibly going to replace her. Yes. And so on each one, we get to cut to a little vignette where we meet them. Right. Um, and one of them, we... We lose before we even get to the the house, yeah. which like was like yeah I was just, yeah what the fuck forgot about that okay so <laughs> this is one of the most perplexing moments I think this uh, sequences whole scene was weird. in the movie we meet this actress uh huh okay um and we'll just she, say the blonde because she is the, the only blonde right the blonde, blonde that really. puts makeup on for bed mm-hmm. yep then oh, she yeah. 
goes to she goes to sit she's on the reading, bed. She, she's reading a script. Yeah, mm-hmm. drinking some wine on her bed, and there's like an intruder watching her from outside. Heavy her breathing window. and all that. Heavy so breathing. It's like very gloves, putting, we uh, see him putting on the gloves, hose. putting yep. on the pantyhose over his Creepy face. Mustache. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and waiting for his moment. Which he takes, he strikes. Yep. And there's like a full on like rape scene. Yep. yep. And you're like, okay, what it was actually okay, but this is kind of tipping, uh, you know, where this scene goes. There was a moment where she pulled his, he wears uh, pantyhose over his face. Yeah. She pulled that up, and I was like, she's going to say, like, oh, Tim, it's you or something. <laughs> that didn't happen, but the scene, but basically, like, yeah. basically resolved that way. Yeah. yeah. It turns out these two are role, they role play. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. you're going to be the pizza guy tomorrow night, you yeah. know? Yeah. And <laughs> she said she doesn't like that because the pepperoni sticks to her ass. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're like, this is just kind of distasteful. But then I, I felt that about, like, a lot of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Watching that whole thing, I'm like, this is a bummer, however this turns out. Yeah. What are we? Okay. And then, as they are about to have sex as themselves, which apparently is a new new wrinkle in their love yeah, life. Yeah, that was funny because she like goes for it, and he's like, "Oh, just straightforward." He's like, "This is new." <laughs> yeah. yeah, the commentary continues on as we pan over to a creepy that doll in the funny. corner who has more to do with this movie than I ever thought anybody would. But the third main star why? of this movie. Colin, no idea. two different directors. <laughs> no idea. Two, the act one and act two. <laughs> okay. That's all I can say. So there's a creepy doll sitting in the corner, and then. And it's like three feet high. It's like yeah, it's a, a toddler one. sized doll. It's pretty big. Yeah. Okay. And it has like the old, like, flip eyes. It's, yeah. And a real yeah. sour face, just mm-hmm. like. Whoa. It's very sad. Yeah. It's a very sad doll. Yeah, like. <laughs> one of those. Then we cut two. <laughs> the blonde is driving on a rainy road. Yep. All of a sudden, she slams on the brakes because there's a little girl in the roadway, and she goes out to investigate, but it's the doll. And then the doll comes to life and grabs her, and then somebody comes out of nowhere and stabs her. No, and then runs, her runs, over runs, car, runs her over with the car. Runs over with the car. And then she, she wakes, wakes up, up screaming. Yep. Yes. And we're like, what the? F- what was what's happening? Yeah. What is the reason for this especially because that was a cool scene and then they undid yeah. the dream like i was actually interested in what i was, was like okay here. now you're doing yeah. something okay because we end up in the same place she dies because <laughs> then yeah then she's attacked in the apartment by a killer who's apparently wearing an old woman mask yeah, which, yeah. with yeah. Light, uh, long red hair the mask is creepy looking it's i don't very, oh, yeah. it bothers it's very me creepy. yeah especially yes. it, and it's one of those masks that looks worse in the daytime than it does yeah. at night it's very <laughs> creepy and this is i think the image from uh i mean aside from the the poster but the, you know anytime i think this is the thing that people remember about this is the only thing i knew about this, this yeah that's yeah. why i picked this, this movie a, i had seen the image yeah, yeah it's a creepy curious. looking yeah. and it was yeah. uh greg canham i think we saw yeah. in the end yeah. of credits uh design it um so that was a vignette that introduced a, a character who doesn't even make it into the movie right <laughs> you know, yeah. into the main right. story right Be- they spend a lot of time with her, with her for her to just go out very quickly right? yeah it makes no sense bizarre i'd say it's like at least we don't need a backstory about her 10 minutes she's just in the gonna movie go that quickly yeah probably it's weird it's weird. very strange um so then the remaining five yes women yes. arrive at the house and then they go up a winding road like it's a castle like yeah. everything should be telling you like you're gonna die like this mm-hmm. is <laughs> yeah that's a perfect place for vincent price to be like yeah <laughs> it was kind of kind of what it felt like right it was yeah. a, a house on haunted Hill. it yeah. felt like a murder mystery weekend yeah it really <laughs> yeah because they're all like sitting there at dinner he's like you're probably wondering why you're all here like it's yeah. a very murder mystery by the end of tonight one of you will be dead <laughs> and then, see that's why i wonder if like the original pitch for this movie like that was what they envisioned it was kind of going to go it was going to go that way a that's little bit it felt like it was going to go maybe that I was, was i was kind of on board with that right maybe that was the it. horror version that they wanted and the other guy turned it into the melodrama that it ended up being yeah, yeah. well we know it ends abruptly so there's probably scenes missing and then there's probably. a lot where it feels like filler scenes of yeah. suspense that goes nowhere mm-hmm. and when i say suspense it well, we'll talk about it. Yeah. So, um, when anytime someone performs in this movie, we see like almost all of the performance, if yeah. not the whole thing. Like, we see a whole goddamn ice skating and a whole dance number too. Yeah. Like, it's it's not just like here's 15 seconds of it. No, like, it's no, like, you're gonna watch this. Here's whole my song. entire routine. Yeah. Well, <laughs> my half say, axles. There were like at least two murder sequences where, um, you know, you have the, your standard 
80s slasher movie setup. Uh, killer springs out and attacks. Yes. But for some reason, the killer gets disabled and the victim gets away. And then it goes on for like another three minutes of the victim kind of or the would be victim running around. Yeah. And then yeah. eventually the killer comes out and kills him. And you're like, OK, what was that extra three minutes for? Mm. Running time. Curtains. Yeah. Is that, that's curtains. why I'm think that was act two. That's I'm trying to fill. You know, it's mm-hmm. like we're just going to we're going to lean into the Friday the 13th yep. ness of this movie. Yep. Got to have a chase scene. Mm hmm. So the women all get there. They're all uh, so, you know, I guess it's setting up that kind of uh, like the bachelor kind of situation where like everybody's going to there's going to be a lot of infighting amongst themselves it is like the right? bachelor. Uh, to win this part. Um, and then. Oh, and we're also yeah introduced to at dinner time. This is Matthew. And Michael Wincott comes in. Sits yeah. Down. And we're say like, a okay. word. He's just drunk. Yeah. Just he just go. He collects the firewood. That's. <laughs> And gets drunk and rides away on a <laughs> jet ski. This is not yeah, I mean, jet that's ski. It. He's it. Well, and he has sex with somebody. I think it was him. In the yeah, pool? That in was the... him. In the hot tub. Okay. But who's the woman? The, was it the youngest one? No. no I don't I think it was so. the one. It was the, uh, the big breasted one. There's no other way to describe <laughs> her. That's it. Yeah. The one who gets fondled in that one scene. Yes. I, I think believe it's, it's her. her. Yeah. yeah. She seems to be the most adventurous. Yeah. The one that's running through the mannequin hall. Yes. That one. Okay. Mannequin hall. That should be cooler and scarier than it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. There's American Hall toward the, the end of this movie. Yeah. Um, you Where sound so defeated by that. I know, because like, it wasn't, uh, you yeah. know, like... It, because yeah. this movie felt like the seasonal depression that I'm currently having. <laughs> yeah. well, That's yeah. what is the problem. Yeah, I guess here. of and all I didn't these, need more of it. Mm-hmm. This is, I guess, the, the thing that we're looking at. in this dinner scene, which is kind of setting up this... Uh, right. The, the movie. Mm. Um, Samantha shows up. Yes. Right? Because there should be six women here, but there's only five. Yep. And then Samantha shows up. And so I was really confused as to whether or not she was supposed to be there. Uh, I wasn't confused. I was like, I get it. She's not supposed to be there, but she showed up. Did she kill yeah. uh, the blonde then? Yeah. To take her place to get there? Yeah. Do we have multiple murderers? Are you, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Holly, whatever you say right now is what happened in this movie. Yeah, I'm going with it. <laughs> Okay, okay. We've all seen this, and I'm not sure if because, she, because she is the only one that we know for sure knows all of the girls that are going to be there. Okay, so well, I'm right. She well, is. I mean, uh, she's the only one that knows who's going to be as there. As far as we know, yeah. Well, that's why I'm saying it. Okay, <laughs> okay. so she. We're, we're thinking. If we're that, reading what this movie you have, is set right, up there's for nothing us. else that tells <laughs> yeah. us different. Okay, so she killed that girl to take her place, and she shows up and surprise, she's here, and Correct. he's like, "What are you doing here? You know, I, I promised you, you this Thank role, you. but you know, now it's not you. Now you're going to compete with the rest of them to actually uh, win this part." Mm-hmm. And um, then I think, uh, yeah, what happens that first night? I, I don't remember much. Um, Somebody probably gets killed. Yeah, there's a jacuzzi fuck, and there's yeah. a weird puppet show. Oh my weird god! Weird puppet show. Yeah. Why are the puppets? Because this is also the interpretive dancer, or is this one of the? No, other? this no, is the, the comedian. comedian. Lynn oh, Griffin. Was she, was she, she doing was, it? Like, the yeah. comedian was doing okay, the puppet show. Right, she right. was like puppet showing, like let me suck you off. Like it yeah. was like it was like a gross adult stuff. It was really gross. It was that was like, the only thing that she had though, because she said she was prepared to blow him or something in order to win this part. Oh, he yeah. he yeah. showed up and embarrassed her. It was like. Well, that's not necessary, but yeah, I'll keep the, it in mind. Or this whatever. is the second time we're introduced to her comedy that is not funny. No, Because exactly. she, she has a little stand-up routine earlier on. Yeah. We'll come back later, but wasn't too wasn't very good. No, no it was terrible. It's it not awful. good or just obvious stuff. Maybe it was for 19, what, 80? No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the, you know, the audience is cued to laugh, and she right. has the kind of the... Like the poise of a, uh, you know, a she, stand-up comedian. You know, like she played a comedian well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though the what she was saying was The material, the material was, like, was shit, yeah. but yeah, she played the comedian well. Landing with a thud. Um, I, think th- I think, though, it's. I think sometimes it's really hard to write stand-up comedy into a movie in a way that feels yeah. good and natural. Yes, that Mo- is always a problem. I don't know why, but it's always a problem always a in problem. movies. Because, I, um, I don't know, maybe... It, because you know it's a movie, mm-hmm. and so you're like, well, they're supposed to laugh. It's a yeah. movie. How yeah. do we even judge how funny that is? Mm-hmm. Right. They're going to laugh. Yeah. That's what always mm-hmm. sticks in my head. Have you ever I, seen um, Obvious Child? 
Yes, oh, no. Jenny yeah, Slate. It's a good movie. It is it's a good really movie, good and movie. they do stand up well on that movie. Yeah, do yeah, it's true. It's a really good movie. I want to see that one. I yeah. was just thinking about this past season of season of uh, and just like that, they had a whole episode where you got to see a comedy concert. That's oh, what they no. kept calling it, and it was. It was really hard to watch because it was just so unfunny, and yet people were cackling like it's. It wasn't even really a, like a stand up. It was more like a TED talk, mm. and yet people were like cackling at it, and it was just no. really hard to watch. I, I think I had stopped watching by then. Do they have like yeah. a warm up act? Because sometimes I think if a warm up act is good, right? Mm. They can get the audience into kind of a groove. Where I they think the will problem laugh is at that, anything. That sure. I think the problem is that whoever's writing the screenplay is also writing the stand up material, and they're probably not a comedian. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I think mm. I think if. You just got to write better jokes for your movie. <laughs> yeah. Or hire a comedian. Well, that one was yeah. pretty desperate. We also meet the older actress who... So we get their insecurities, right? Mm-hmm. This is the art art drama. Yes. <laughs> uh, she's very insecure. And so she, you know, even though she's very successful, and so she's afraid that, you know, she's going to lose this part. Um, mm-hmm. she's, and then, got, she's got like Blanche from Streetcar Named Desire vibes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yep. Always boozing it up. Or she's just like scared of her aging self and trying to be yep. young and relevant, but yeah. also kind of losing it because of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so she needs to be Audra, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, it is her lifeblood at this point. And what is Audra? We don't know. We don't know. Because we haven't been told. So <laughs> we don't know what this means. They're all auditioning for the role of Audra in it. The many I know. Yeah. Right? That's, <laughs> That's all what... I can think of. Mm-hmm. Well, the other thing that I don't think is set up early in the movie, and I think this is what kind of, you know, uh, in watching these, you're kind of waiting for, is they're not setting up Final Girl. No. Right? Yeah. No. Like at all. It's like mm-hmm. there's an ensemble of women, and we know that John Vernon and Samantha Agger are the leads and we know that they have this uh you know relationship where they're always fighting with each other right mm-hmm. because yeah he threw her over for like everyone <laughs> everyone else uh for this part yeah. um they do play off a scene where um the skate uh roller you know, the, the ice, ice skate skating. girl yeah overhears them fighting and they're like oh that was just a you know that was a scene old that scene, i wrote old scene <laughs> tricks of the trade yeah and then he goes and sleeps with her. Yeah. Oh, gross. Um, yeah, it is really just, uh, he, he walks into the room, and then we see the aftermath of it later. She's crying a lot. Like, I, I understand he's using yeah, his position it, and power over these cringe. women, but what it's doing for the rest of the movie, I don't know. Well, really? it possibly gives justification for the murders for, because well, she yeah. is the next one to die. So, you know, if we're saying uh, that Samantha True. Edgar is committing these murders. But I think that's where, like, it, for me, it's kind of crossed because it's not, yeah, because it's the, not her the, fault. The women are also dying. So it's like, why are, like, are they the victims? Are they, like, the villains? Is he the villain? Is he the victim? Like, they're, there's not clear right. lines he's of the, the motives he's here. He's the like, villain doing things, but the women are the ones getting killed Yeah, they're for getting it, killed, so I feel like, the, I feel like if they're going to be killed off, maybe they should be not so pleasant characters. Uh, yeah. You shouldn't feel sorry for them. I don't know, it's, it's very uh, weird to me. Right, because it feels like they're trying to do both. Obviously, the, they want to, they want the motivation to be, um, of the women all want the part, so who's willing to kill for it? Yeah, but it's yeah. yeah, but like you were saying, yeah, it just it doesn't fall that way. Yeah, based on the power dynamics of the characters, I can't believe strange. I'm saying about that. It's very strange. Movie. Yeah, and that's I think what gives it that kind of like unpleasant yeah. vibe, you know, yeah. adds to it. And then but, there's the scene of complete humiliation when he makes oh well, the audition the, scenes or whatever that audition. they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a bunch of weird ones. Oh, um, they're weird. So what's that one? There, I guess this there's two main that are just weird. His- He's just exercising his fetishes on these people. That's he it. really is. That's, that's all it. he's that's doing. Like. Yeah. Really is. It's weird. Well, there's this whole thing, you know, like uh, oh, I mean, it just acting class is what this feels like, you know. And I mean, acting- which yeah, why why do they need this? Yeah, like yeah. they're here to audition, not to take classes, like- right? Because he's going to mold them into odd. He's one of those psychotic directors that is going to make people jump through hoops to even audition. Like, yeah. Yeah. like, wasn't there a whole thing recently about Madonna for her biopic was making people go through like a three week boot camp just to be able to audition? And everyone Jeez. was like, what the fuck? See, another yeah. reason what never do yeah. a biopic while someone's still alive. No, it should be no. illegal. Fuck it should that. be illegal. No, should be very- like, fuck that shit. Yeah. I hate that. Mm-hmm. 
Well, this one's <laughs> particular. This scene is uh, particularly humiliating because yeah, he puts mm-hmm. the old woman mask on her and then says, "Seduce me." Seduce yeah, me. can't use words. And he's like, you, "It's like you're not going to be beautiful forever. You may be disgusting." <laughs> yeah, make me desire you. You know, yeah. this is in front of the other women, and it's yeah, very it's awkward. Just mm-hmm. not, yeah. Um, and then you're like, okay, so what Probably is their relationship, trutalized. right? Because, I mean, obviously she's, I mean, like you said, she wants the part, so she's willing to kill for it. But it's also, uh, you do get the feeling that, like, because the movie becomes this, like, rinse and repeat cycle of him uh, taking some woman to bed. And then the next scene is her, Samantha Agar, like, becoming aware of it. And then the next scene is that woman getting killed by a shadowy figure in mm-hmm. the old woman mask? Sometimes right. not so shadowy. Sometimes broad daylight ice skating. Yeah. yeah. So what happens? Okay. So this is the centerpiece uh, kill scene of the movie. This is the one that mm-hmm. probably is on the AFI list of scariest horror movie scenes ever made. Oh boy. I, I think what not. I thought it was going to be in my head was scarier than I actually. Yeah. Because they slow mo it. Like they the do. And there's makes nothing it not, not scary. Uh, there's nothing that's. Less scary than the slow mo of this, a slow mo of ice skating killer. It makes it comical when you slow mo stuff. It makes it funny. Like, yeah, it's, it's an ice skating killer in general is funny. Yeah, it, no, it is really, funny. Yes, it yeah, really it is. is funny. I was, but we were hoping because we get a full scene of the the youngest um, ingenue there. We'll say uh, she's an ice skater. She's apparently very good at it. So she goes out to the frozen lake with her boombox. And uh, this is where we get the whole performance. The whole song. The whole, whole song the whole of thing. whoever paid to have their song, whoever friend of <laughs> one of their songs. Like, can we just make a movie to feature my song? Which is how this feels like it came about. Uh, so she does her whole performance. Then her boombox goes off. And she goes over to check it out. And then there's a hand in the snow. What could it be again? <laughs> the she starts doll. digging. That, and starts what is it? We're like, is it a dead body? No, it's the fucking doll again. <laughs> which doesn't matter i know because no, i was doesn't. at it's that so moment annoying. i was sitting there going like okay so the killer broke into the blonde's apartment got the doll i had the doll that the blonde was dreaming about right yeah. so this is significant in some way it ties into the backstory i don't know took it with her yeah. up to the the uh mansion She's like, and then buried it in Andy. the snow so no one could find it and then and it, hoped. Well, the, fu- <laughs> the funny thing is the funny thing is is that when we find out that she didn't really need that doll because there's a whole hall of mannequins at this house yeah. Yeah. yeah she did not need to bring that doll nope. strange <laughs> yes but yes. so then she skates away using the doll as a, as a shield yeah while this person holding a sickle and wearing the grandma mask on ice skates slow mo chases her yeah. and yeah. packs at her like forty times before he connects. Yeah, but, but somehow misses. Yep, gets right? her in the shoulder. She, yeah, she gets her like right in the. And mm-hmm. then she gets yeah. knocked down. And she's able to fight the assailant off with, with the, doll. the doll. Yep, and then scuttles away into the woods. Yeah. And that goes on for five scuttle. minutes. She does scuttle of yeah. her she in the woods. She makes these whimpering noises. Yeah, just <laughs> struggling really through ir- the woods. It's really irritating. Well, because of, that was the other thing I noticed. Because of the slow motion, like all the e- after each, uh, you know, scythe uh, slash, yeah. Yeah. there was a ah! then <laughs> ah! it just yeah. kept going on. It was yeah. like, what <laughs> is happening? Fuck off. She wanders in the woods for five minutes and gets to a tree, and of course, Killer is behind the tree, just like Jason in Friday the 13th, and slashes her throat. I just wish they would have just gone for it, and while the killer was like skating towards her, done like a triple axle and, and like like and <laughs> kicked her throat open or something. That's yeah. what I wanted. Yeah. That's what I was hoping for. I want uh, yeah. yeah. With the budget, like, they could have done as that. she like spins, like she slices her throat just yeah. gracefully, it, and, yeah. and that would almost great. work better within the theme of the movie if the killer was also like, "See, I can do this better than her." Yeah, yeah. like if she could yeah. do everything yes. better than the other people and kill them all doing it. Yes, that would be fantastic. <laughs> that would make sense. Right. I would but, love that. That's the remake. Curtains I would that we love that. Yeah. Like the interpretive dance, she comes in and she just like. <laughs> and the, but the way she does it, she's just like beating her up and punching yeah. her with each move. She's yeah. like she's like dance fighting. Yes, yeah. that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, see, what and as that she like breaks her neck like gracefully. Oh, that would what be was awesome. that move they did in Blades of Glory that decapitated the other person? Yes, oh, no. the double yes. lotus or whatever. They're like, it's yes. impossible. And they have that video of the Korean Olympics where the person gets decapitated. It's wonderful. Oh, it's it's beautiful. The funniest yeah. joke in that whole movie. It is oh, the funniest wow. joke in that movie. Yeah. That would be stupid. Yeah, this is what we needed. But instead, we got uh, boob fondling. 
We did. Weird, nervous. Touch her like a man. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, because we don't know what's happening. I guess it seems yeah, it like all of a sudden out of the, you know, because the director's going around and sleeping with the, the women one at a time. And then it's like the women just start like, you know, making out with each other. Well, it's not even that. It's a no. really weird. She's just like slowly, nervously unbuttoning the other. The unbuttoning goes yeah. on for a long time. Yeah. And we're like, what's, so the mu- what's happening yeah. here? The music of this movie as well. It's very, <laughs> yeah, it's very slow piano. It's yeah. Weird. Yeah. Very, it's very easy listening. And so you kind yeah. of get a close up. very uneasy. <laughs> of a breast as it's uh, undraped. Mm-hmm. And then um, yeah, the, the nervous hand comes in, and then all of a sudden the director pops up behind yeah. her like, no, no t- touch, touch her like a man. Yeah. <laughs> this is a man seducing a woman, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, what in the holy hell? Well, no. What does yeah. this have to do with Audra? Right. I have no I fucking idea. Yeah. This is just him. He's like, I'm going to yeah. act out all my yeah. fetishes here. Mm-hmm. And, then he's, her. and then he's like, use your vulnerability. And I'm like, I don't understand this dude's direction mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. Holly, he's a genius. You don't have to understand his direction. You just got to go with it. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Um, you feel good about saying no, that? No, I don't. <laughs> was one of those women the next, uh, I don't think she was the next victim because it no, was. No, one of them's the interpretive dancer and one's the the big brother. Yeah, we see a full right. interpretive dancing in her bedroom by herself. Yeah, but he sleeps with uh, the older actress. Right, because at this point. Right. She finds Ice Skater's head in her toilet. Yeah. Yep. Yes. And he's yeah. like, you're dreaming. There's nothing in there. Come with me back to your room and I'll prove to you. There's a lot of you hysterical woman. There's yeah. a lot yeah. of that going on in this. And sure enough, there's nothing there. And so then so we go like, bed. yeah, but what? Right. And then sleeps with her. But I was like, A, how did the killer get into the bathroom? Because we're <laughs> supposed to assume that they snuck in through a tiny basement window into the shower stall, didn't do anything, mm. then snuck back out before she opened the shower curtains, but somehow left the head in the toilet and then returned to grab the head. Okay, this is breaking my brain. There's a lot. It's impossible. Move on. Mm-hmm. Yep. So then she gets killed the next night because Samantha Egger is like, uh, she's there, slept with him yeah, too. There's a double kill the next night. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay, tell me about that one. Um. So, older actress and Stryker are in the bedroom and then someone comes in with a gun and shoots them both. They fly <laughs> out of the window. Yep. An older actress falls to her death where the the director somehow loops back through the Swings window. In. He got caught the on the f- curtains, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he got, swung back in. Comes through the window on the first floor <laughs> yeah. and is impaled on the broken glass. Yes. Yeah. Very ghost. <laughs> that's what happened that's and we, happened. we think that happened because yeah, it's our, very our dark. copy yeah, it was very dark, dark. i mean dark. this movie as joaquin phoenix said in signs it's very dark yeah very dark. <laughs> very dark like you can't even tell what the hell's going on in a lot of the scenes but again that is uh, not the fault of uh the movie that's just our copy um i mean it came out like this i gotta yeah. figure it's right. somehow i know because fault. this is how we used to watch stuff for that's Oof, like it looked like that wild. on vhs yeah. this is Back why nobody could figure out like we see stuff today where it's like that that killer has the hands of a woman so we know who this is this yeah. is how they were watching <laughs> them when we watch it. but it wasn't like that in, it was a surprise it wasn't like that in theaters though theaters yeah. were probably well, closer yeah. to like your blu-ray today but like home video releases mm-hmm. did look like this mm-hmm. but we rough we did see a difference in this kills because we didn't see See the killer where they weren't wearing a mask because we didn't see them and they used a gun right yes. so we're thinking that there's something different about this one mm-hmm. it feels like what we saw way earlier in the movie when we were first introduced to when the yeah the, for, the foreshadowing yes yeah which is not like on uh, the stage yeah holding the big gun yeah right if only she could have said the line at that point yeah, yeah. but then yeah Okay, so then there's then the, the interpretive the dance, I think, is like intercut with this, right? There's a woman just standing alone in a dance studio. I think the interpretive dance happened before and... this. I don't think it matters I, too I much. I don't think it matters. I think they're happening at about the same really? time because the girl is in the library when he comes flying through the window and she like runs through the rest oh, of the yeah, house. Oh, this whole thing. After yeah. he comes through the window, then she goes on her whole adventure. Exactly. Right. Through the, the hall of curtains. Yeah. And the mannequins. Mannequins. Yeah. 
Yeah, because she finds like the basement, which is the prop room. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. she ends up in the prop room. And she's a fucking idiot. She's like checking the car in the basement to see if she can like drive it away. I know. Are you like what are you doing? I'm like, okay, let's say the car works. Where are you gonna go? Yeah, like you're in a basement. There's no way out. No, yeah. What's your strategy here? Didn't they say it was the road was snowed in too? Yeah, yeah. But so I mean, how do you get a car out of a basement? (laughs) But was it she tried a a car or vehicle outside? She she went outside outside to her car. She found a body. In the uh, hot tub, who's we're not even sure we who know, it was. We think, we think it's, it's Matthew. Yeah, we think it's Matthew. And then, yeah, her car didn't work, right? So that's mm-hmm. why she went back in the yeah. house through this whole basement thing that yeah. went on forever. The killer is there. Mm-hmm. She clocks the killer in a scene where I couldn't even tell what happened because it looked like, uh, right? There was like a pole or something, and she, like, all of a sudden. St- Dabbed at it. There was then, like a dummy that she had put her coat and hat on. Oh, that's what it was. It was the yeah. killer was like, oh, I'm going to get her or the whatever. Killer stabbed mm-hmm. her and then yeah. she came out from behind it and knocked her. But that's something. not clear in the editing. No, not at I all. I mean, that's what we were like. No, that was what happened. No, but it's the killer walks up to it and then uh, uh, violently falls over. <laughs> yeah. And, onto the ground. <laughs> and we're just like, what? What happened? But then you cut back and you see the other woman is behind the, yes. the thing. It's like, right. okay, she But there was her nothing to indicate that something had happened to her. No sound, no right. movement, mm-hmm. no editing. Yeah. Yeah. And then she's going through the mannequin hallway and then she finds the interpretive dancer hanging. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then she finds the stage door that it's all bricked up when she opens it. Like, oh, no. And then, you know, what do you do in those situations? You just collapse because you're like, that's it. It's over. There's no way out. And I'm screwed. And and hide in a little cubby. Yeah. She hides in the air vent. Right. And the killer comes in and can't see her. Yeah. And then. then This is another scene where we're just like, we're just hanging out until eventually they get killed. I know. It just seems like it goes on forever. And you're like, what Mm -hmm. in the hell? And why? Because we could have resolved this earlier right. yeah. in, um, a, in a better way she just gets she tries to leave and then she gets dragged through the back of the vent and screams and dies uh-huh. yep uh-huh. that's it yep and i do remember i think at this point i was sitting there going like well how many how many girls are left like who is our yeah, final hard girl to figure out here? at this point because you we know knew what's her name was the comedian yeah yeah is still alive still alive so comedian and samantha, samantha. were our last remaining yeah yeah so we're like, okay, this is, you know, the showdown. Right? This is we're going to wrap this yeah. up. So we cut back to the comedian. In the kitchen trying oh, to yeah. open champagne. Yeah. Which she just gets scared, drops it on the floor, and then leaves it there. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. Samantha Egger comes in. She's like, don't worry, there's more in the refrigerator. And so we get another bottle of champagne. But Audra would know how to open a bottle of champagne. Yes. Yep. Audra would have broken it on the table and drank it from the broken neck. How do you know? <laughs> well, it's very violent. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we're, we're two minutes away from this movie ending. Right, it, it was very abrupt. She says something, Samantha Edgar, like you know, says something about how Stryker was. Yes, and the comedian yeah. picks up on this was, and Samantha Edgar confesses everything. Oh, Surprise! He's dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I killed him. And you're like, oh, you want to call the police? Go ahead. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> very yeah. dramatic. Yeah. yeah, very. And, and then, yeah, a surprise twist happens. Is it? I mean, I was surprised. Okay. I was surprised or, you know, because okay. I guess I couldn't, yeah. I wasn't sure. Like, Maybe what? confused. No, Sur- <laughs> surprise, yes. More confused. Okay. In the in the surprise. Okay. Then she's like, don't worry, I'm not, I'm not going to kill you or your other friends. And she's like, oh, they're already dead. Yeah, my friends are dead. And then she what? revealed that she's got a knife and then stabs the actress. You? And she screams. So That's that right, Michaela. Saying- two killers. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying that the, the comedian stabs... The comedian was the one in the costume. Yes. Okay, but then why were the people who were... So she was like, I would kill for this part, which is her first line on the comedy stage when we see her in the flashback. Mm-hmm. So she's yes. actually going around in the costume, killing all the women who w- were up for the part not so much because, because w- the way I was taking it was that it was Samantha Egger doing the murders because they were sleeping with Stryker. No. And yes, then she that's killed what him. it was set up yep. to make us think. But turns mm-hmm. out that wasn't true at yeah, all. That was no. the red herring. Yeah. 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 But Samantha uh, shot. Yeah, she shot 
the actress and the director. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That she did. So that's the only murder that she the is responsible for. Murders. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Murders. Yeah. Okay. Just those. And then she gets stabbed and she's dead. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. And then we're like, okay. And then, uh, and then uh, we yeah. cut to, oh, she says the same reveal. line again, right? We're like, are we going back to the comedy club? Right. We see the comedian. She's like, I'd kill for this part. Yeah. And we pan out. And it's her standing in front of a bunch of other mental patients. Mm-hmm. In the asylum, because mm-hmm. now she's been Comedy committed. Yeah. Oh, no, I think that was a beforehand. No, that was after. She got arrested for this, right? You think yeah. so? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm, I place it as she, because we see her doing that at the very beginning of the movie, her stand-up routine. Right. I took it as you think she was a never- flashback to that happening. Do you think she was never actually at a comedy club and she was always doing it for the mental patients? I th- oh, yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, I, I, okay. I thought yeah, oh, no, it could have been... Doing it for yeah, the that's, I thought it interpreted it as like this whole thing was her fantasy. In her in her mind, she was doing it at a comedy club, but it was mm-hmm. actually for yeah. mental patients. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. that's what yeah, I That's what, how I I can see yeah. it both ways. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can see it the other way, too. No, 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 she I'm gets arrested Maybe and then goes to the Maybe that's the one good thing about this movie is that it kind of is open to either one of those interpretations. I'm with you, yeah. I said maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm taking it literally that, that she at I the think, end of the movie. I, I think you're right, and yeah. I think I'm right. I as think well. everybody's right in this yeah. situation. And my no favorite, evidence, yeah. my favorite thing was that the app we used to watch this started to play the next thing before this movie was over. <laughs> yeah. And what was it? Leverage, the TV show. Yeah, we watched <laughs> the TV movie Leverage. Yeah. It's like, you want you want to watch this? Like there next, was, she right? was still it talking. Was, and it was like, over. Leverage is up next. Yeah. I know because there were still Jesus, credits yeah, to go, yeah, and it was still, like, yeah. no. it's like wow. Yeah. It was funny. Like, it, was like the, it was the cherry on top of this movie <laughs> and the experience watching it tonight. It really was. Considering the app jumping and everything we had to do. It's like, <laughs> Jesus. Even even the app was like, let's wrap this up. Yeah, okay? yeah, like, we're, we're done. <laughs> Leverage is what you suggest. <laughs> what is the algorithm trying to connect here? Oh, I don't oh. get it. <laughs> it was very strange and very bizarre. But that was that was it. We were out. That was curtains. Curtains. Was, uh, curtains. curtains came down on curtains. A couple sets of credits and then act we were done. Act. Yeah. 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 Great piano. Uh, yeah, any good. more anecdotes from the making of this nope. uh, bizarre nope. movie? They're, they're How much it made? A, a 2K and... restoration of this with a bunch of behind the scenes stuff. Well, where... so you're going to buy no, that and watch no, it, aren't you? No. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. will he? No. Mm-hmm. He might. I know. We're going to have to find out he might. what he thought Not of that sick. the movie. Uh, okay, so uh, thanks for sticking with yes, us. Yes, I bought Kathy's curse, but this is different. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to go around the table and tell you individually what we thought of the movie and whether or not we would recommend it. And remember, the rules are, if all four of us recommend it, <laughs> that means you're contractually I'm, obligated I'm by listening to the show to watch it. I'm glad you added that. <laughs> That's right. I want to make sure that they're clear on how this is going to go after if you keep listening. So first of all, we're going to answer some of your mail and in order to do that, we're going to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. <laughs> <laughs> just saw Igor poke his head like, whoa. He's like, oh, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> sir. He's like, my cue. Where's my cue? He was like, hmm? Uh, well, we want to, uh, tell the folks at home how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook, facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show or Twitter at Sat Freak Show, or they can email us Saturday Night Freak Show, yahoo.com, or they can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, James Tyre writes in oh. and <laughs> says, hi guys, I'm a huge fan of your podcast. Keep up the great work. You guys are fun. Oh. Thanks. Thanks for listening. We shall try. Appreciate it. Uh, about tonight's movie, Curtains, Michael Whitaker writes in and says, so are you saying it's curtains for you? Yes. Yeah. Curtains. And he also says, I'll assume that joke went over like a lead brick. <laughs> uh, Adam Kaler writes in and says, ah, the 80s, back when you could go to a random ice pond to skate and encounter a magic hamburger loving clown, a showboating beagle, or a scythe wielding killer <laughs> in a Captain Kirk, I mean hockey, I mean old lady mask. Is that the only scene people remember from this movie? Yeah. Yes, yes. it is. I don't it's the know only the thing I yeah, knew I was about like, that. Sean and I just what are the first two references? Looks. The McDonald's commercial with Ronald McDonald's. Oh, the the Christmas yeah. commercial, yeah. the ice skating. Yes, yeah. thank you. Okay. Nope. 
Yeah, oh, the showboating. You've Beagle? definitely seen I've probably, it. Oh, yeah. I've it's definitely wonderful. probably seen it, but it's not, yeah. I'm not processing it right now. And then Snoopy. we'll pull Snoopy. it up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Snoopy. Yes. Okay, Snoopy. Yeah. Got it. Got gotcha, it. Gotcha. I wasn't following. I'm there. I'm there now. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. All right. Classic so, scenes. Uh, Sobe <laughs> Detura says, did you know this film was funded in part by profits from milk sold in <laughs> bags? <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, because it's Canadian? Because it's Canadian. Yeah, yeah. He says, it. okay, that isn't true, but it's... Uh, <laughs> milk oh, makes its know, return to the freak show. I'm, I'm gonna, the, milk would bring this I'm movie. Gonna, <laughs> milk would have paid for this movie. That makes a lot of I sense. I choose to believe that. Canadian true. milk at that. The one, t- the, one time Mika- a, the one time Michaela's on board with milk. This is, <laughs> this is a harmless milk. conspiracy theory for me to believe in, so I'm okay with it. Oh. Uh, Richard Kratzer says the screenshot that we posted of this movie reminds me of the cover of Brandon Cronenberg's film Possessor, and mm. that's a Saturday Night Freak Show movie if there ever was one. Mm, I still haven't seen it. Another Canadian movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. I kind of I want I want to watch that too. It does look like the cover. And uh, Jimbo Ice says I love Canada, so I have to check this out. <laughs> Uh, we well, all that, love wow, that's a big love of Canada. <laughs> we all love Canada. If it's a, a Canadian movie, Canada. we have to watch it. Um, okay, yeah, fine. Go watch Offerings or, or whatever. That, <laughs> something was Canadian. Was that one Canadian there. too? Oh, Canada. maybe. Uh, uh, last I week. Was like New Zealand or something weird like that, wasn't it? I don't. Uh, no, now I will never. I'll, I'll, I'll never. We'll never know. I'll uh. never look it up again. <laughs> Uh, last week we watched a movie uh, called To All a Good Night. Uh, yes, we did. Yeah, yes, somebody remember the name. Yes, yeah. Uh, Joey Bly says in 1980 there was New Year's Evil to all a good night and Christmas Evil. Yeah, I'm seeing a theme here. Yeah, yep. lots of evil. It was a big yeah. year. Yeah, <laughs> that was when they said, "Hey, Halloween was a big deal. Let's make a Christmas thing." Yeah, it was a big year. Um, Robin Linneman Silverberg says a finishing school with its own airstrip, a really bad British actress, and a plot that wants to be Black Christmas slash Friday the Thirteenth, but is more blood rage wacky. Definitely a Saturday Night Freak Show podcast flick. I agree. Mm-hmm. I think we all recommended it. Uh, Christopher Huddleston says, I, heads. "I watched it for the first time a couple of weeks ago. It's bad. They definitely <laughs> leaned hard into ripping off Black Christmas early on in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> sure did. Uh, the week before that, we watched a movie called Wild Things. Mm. Um, and Jinx the Ninja says, much like Denise Richards, <laughs> you do make a couple of good points. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Uh, okay. Billy Moore says, next up, Denise Richards will be in the upcoming video game series Twisted Metal on Peacock. I hope to get to see her in the upcoming new DCU being put together by James Gunn after this upcoming show. Fuck yeah, make her a superhero. That would be awesome. I, mean, well, I would love that. Why the fuck Wonder not? Wo- are they recasting Wonder Woman? Well, she would not be Wonder Woman. Uh, Mark Harrison says, no my favorite piece of trivia about this, and this is spoilers, obviously, for Wild Things if you haven't seen it, but he says, <laughs> my favorite piece of trivia about this film is that in the original script, Kevin Bacon and Matt Dillon's characters were revealed to be in a secret gay romance, but that was cut yep. due to one of the actors claiming it wouldn't, it would have been too far-fetched and the audience wouldn't believe it. Hmm. Is that true? That's yes. where they draw the line with that movie. That is true. That's where it's too far. Okay, all right, all right. Boy, not the six twists before that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's where it falls apart. Those are, those are all believable. Discussed. Yeah. That's where the horny mountain starts to fall apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of which, Steve horny Carney mountains? writes in and says, Wild Things might have the most twists I've ever seen in a film. Yeah. Yep. Oh, the, wait, wait. The 200 level IQ. That's that's not outlandish. <laughs> the, the most genius person that's ever lived is Nev Campbell in Wild Things. Well, we also posted a shot of uh, Denise Richards uh, exiting a swimming pool. We did. Uh, sure did. From Wild Things. Kryptonian Orphan says, I see Denise Richards was channeling her inner, inner Phoebe Cates. Yes. And I got to say, yes. I'm here for it. That oh, was yeah. uh, famously, right? Is she mm-hmm. the most yes. famous person That's, to ever get out of a swimming pool? I think pool? so. Oh, Derek? Yeah. yeah. She comes out of the, the ocean. Ocean. Oh, well, that's Ursula usually. Andrus comes out of the ocean. Bo Derek and Ten. Oh, maybe ten? I think I'm yeah. thinking Tommy Boy. <laughs> <laughs> but she does a scene where she gets out of the pool. Yeah, well, we're it's not, definitely not as famous as all of those. <laughs> as but yeah. that's the movie I was yeah. thinking of. Forgot. Um, well, about they were probably parroting that scene from Fast they Time. Were. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 she yeah. does. Yeah. Oh, I'm not yeah. familiar. Is she wearing a red swimsuit? No, not at all. Okay. No, I think Bo Derek is enough to like give her that shot. No, we're saying for, like yeah, but we're agreeing, but not for that movie. We were saying Ten and her other like beach well, sure. movies that she was famous for, and you Bolero. were like, no, Bolero, yeah. Bolero, yes. right? Yeah. 
Uh, Travis Legler says a few years before shots like that were being done in the Sandlot. And then oh, after yeah. we yeah. grew up with, uh, we grew up a little and they gave us wild things. Either we or Hollywood was obsessed with ladies near the pool in the 90s. I was an exchange student in Germany the year American Beauty came out. I went with my German family to the theater to see it, <laughs> and they didn't bat an eye at any nudity. Europe takes sexuality and nudity in a completely different context than the American culture does. For them, it's a very natural and expected part of life. Mm-hmm. Bless them for it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but then you wouldn't have horny movies like uh, Wild Things, would you? I don't know. You got uh, right? If it's all, have horny movies? If it's, yeah, if it's all just allowed and, and, and accepted, do we get horny movies like Wild Things? No, we don't. No, I don't think we do. Uh, I think the repression, these, are, think, the, these I, are the bubbles, of, the <laughs> bubbling lava that pops movies. up. I don't like this argument. When, <laughs> <laughs> I think you and get, sometimes they explode. No, I, think, I think you'd get more like grown-up erotic movies. <laughs> like Blue is the warmest cut. No, I don't yeah. know. Is that the last one that... Climax. No, not Climax. Love in 3D. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bill Hainer says, uh, uh, Wild Things is a quintessential 90s movie. It was such a part of the zeitgeist that it, w- it was issued free with the purchase of my first DVD player. Weird <laughs> three pack. Also it included Lost in Space and Six Days, Seven Nights. I what? traded the other two for The Exorcist and Dr. No, but I held on to Wild Things wow. for Reasons. That's yeah. things <laughs> lost in space. Yeah, that's a very random. All Columbia three movies and and six days, seven nights. The Harrison Ford yeah. and, and Hayes classic. Hayes. Yeah. Oh. Oh, there you go. Right. Make sure you rest. <laughs> Free with your DVD player. That's okay. crazy. And Carson I'm crazy Star- Joe. Come on down. DVD <laughs> player. We'll give you three free movies. Um, Carson Snar says. Oh, because uh, John McNaughton was the director of Wild Things, so Carson Snart says, have you guys covered Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer? It's a good movie, but not one I would watch all the time. Yeah. yeah. We, have we haven't. It we yet. haven't yet. We haven't. Is yeah. it on the list? For, it has uh, been years past, I know. Okay. I know I've seen it before. Okay. It's on lists. Well, one day, perhaps. It's <laughs> not like our voting. When the, mood, when the mood strikes. Um, okay. I don't know if I'm ever in the mood for that movie. Right, that's the problem. So, <laughs> the uh, mood. I guess thank you each of you for writing in yes. and uh, and telling us what you think about these things. But now we're going to tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Curtains, starting with... Colin. Oh, my God. It was bored out of my <laughs> mind. I mean, like, I haven't been that bored at a movie in a while. And I think that is... Uh, yeah. It was... The ultimate sin. It was really bad. And um, the surprising thing was when we sat down to watch the movie and we fired it up on Prime <laughs> and it said, like, you have 29 minutes left. And I'm like, oh, shit. Hey, Colin, Colin watched an hour of this movie. Oh, we didn't. Well, I, I, still, I wonder where Colin abandoned yeah, ship. Colin, did it, did, could you sense out no. where you stopped last time? No, no. no. <laughs> I mean, I know, obviously, like, I I've, I've seen here. the... I think I saw it, you know, like on something way 20 years ago <laughs> and it made no impression except for these, the, uh, ice skating scene yeah, and the rabid granny or whatever. Um, and I'm, I know I saw that the last time that is the only scene that anyone remembers from this movie. The mm-hmm. rest of it is forgettable. It's awful. It's unpleasant. It's, um, and even that scene in itself is not great. It's not a good scene. It's just. It's just ice skating. Yeah. No, like I said, my, my idea of what I thought it was going to be was way cooler it's than just what the, it was. Yeah, the yeah. picture is iconic, Yeah, but it's yeah. not anything spectacular at all. I know, because when I was looking around and you know stuff to share on social media about this movie, it's like everything is the ice skating scene, mm-hmm. um, and there's nothing else that would tell you like, oh, that's curtains. I mean, you're going to see these images and be like, I don't know what movie that's from. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah, it was. I think it's forgettable because there's no plot to really hang on to. There's no characters to really connect with. It's just, uh, you know, I mean, it's one of the worst slasher movies, I think. And it surprises me that it has a following at all. But I think that was just because it was high profile, high ish profile. I mean, I was aware of it in the 80s where like I wasn't aware of a lot of the other stuff that we've done. I found later this one I knew was out back then. so, yeah, I would say this is terrible, awful movie. You have to avoid it at all costs. Holly, what'd you think? Uh, there is nothing redeeming about this and no reason to watch it. Sean, what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Michaela. <laughs> there really, there's, there really is nothing that there's nothing that you should watch in this movie. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that uh, that would that should draw you to this. Not even curiosity should bring you to this movie. Like it just it is one of those where you're just like I don't feel good watching this movie. Like I, like Colin said boring, 
which is the ultimate sin of most movies. And just the just the just the scenes which anything was going on just made you feel bad for the people if nothing for if not for the characters that were in this movie. Yeah, I did. no. Oh, this, wait, should we recommend it to aspiring actors? No. <laughs> no. Okay. No. No one needs to watch. No, no one. No one. Just turn around and get out of the business. <laughs> yeah, no one needs to watch this. Yeah, there were moments where we were just like I would my Holly was like I would leave. I was like I would leave too. <laughs> yeah. This is not nothing is worth this. Uh yeah, this is just it's That not, was before the killing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is we're talking yeah. about the human treatment of uh, people. It was in when this the movie. Ha- sock puppet started. I said oh, I'd be leaving. You know what? Yeah. You know what? More sock puppets may have helped this movie <laughs> and you can't say it wouldn't have i don't yeah, know yeah i can't but no that. there's uh there's nothing really redeeming about this movie so i'm gonna tell you to skip it michaela take us home yeah i uh i'm disappointed because i had seen that image for so long and it always looked so creepy and i was like oh my god it's in the daytime that's so fucking cool the right. mask looks scary and we've heard and... of curtains it's yeah like, oh, i've heard of it curtains. yeah i've heard of people speak highly of this movie and i'm just like what the fuck did they watch because like <laughs> this was so boring like it was just dull and it, it was only 90 minutes so it felt super long yeah. and it just like it had no momentum it had no like through line or forward kind of progress that and it's they took a simple concept and made it so convoluted like yeah. it just it's it, it, if it would have just been a straightforward like who done it murder mystery it could have been at least a little entertaining you there's know? no there's no gore no there's None no gore. you don't see any of the kills Mm-mm. nothing it's, you just that's another cardinal of, of slasher movies. yeah yeah. You, yeah you don't see anything nothing. yeah and then the only nudity is in a very weird context a <laughs> very weird context <laughs> so yeah like everything is just off like all the it's things like the you, slow birth of a breast yeah. There was actually a scene early where the oh, blonde bathtub. was in a bathtub. Yeah. And then the next shot yeah. was her with a towel on. She's out of the bathtub. I'm like, oh, we're watching like the edited version. Yeah. Or something, but we weren't. No. Mm-hmm. It's just, it, yeah. it just, it takes all the things you love about slasher movies and doesn't do them. <laughs> like, and that I just, if they really, like, it's clear that the production issues, like, are, uh, I mean, they're apparent. <laughs> you know, it's just... But I don't think there's anything salvageable here anyways. You know, I don't think that this is like a matter of editing and you can find a good movie. I don't no. think that's the case. I think it's a total loss. So just, uh, that's no, pass on it. Don't watch it. I like that. Total yeah, loss. Yeah, it is a total loss. <laughs> it's a good way it, to if there was like a movie insurance, you just total this guy like, and send uh, it to yeah. the junkyard. This would be the you one uh, yeah. where you'd be on the slate. Crush like, it. Crush that. it. Yeah, yeah. done. <laughs> But you got a little bit of marketing money, and uh, you yeah. can polish a turd. Apparently, and uh, it's eighty three to strike. Yeah. You know, get it out there. Makes try and make some money. Yeah, off a cheap movie. It has a cult following even today. So <laughs> yeah. we are not part uh, of that. Cult. No, we're oh. warning you away from yeah. curtains. Don't join that cult. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, next week is the episode you've been waiting for all year long. That's right. It's coming up New Year's. So we're it's so good. Tell Sometimes you, we delete it. And <laughs> don't. <listen. laughs> That's right. It's the best and worst. Of of 2022 yeah we're gonna yeah. each run down our top five best movies and our one worst movie yes, zola of the <laughs> zola again <laughs> Zola again. this year's episode brought to you by zola brought to you by zola and zola Sean is, too. sean's still the only one that's seen yes. the only one. i still recommend it are we doing champagne again and we do champagne oh, we're gonna we're gonna party yeah, up I'll, and this yeah. is our party oh, time champagne crazy yeah. drunk i'm gonna eat an edible yeah <laughs> get wild yeah <laughs> All right, so st- I mean, the no now you, holds barred episode. Yeah, you got to yeah. tune in. We may arm wrestle again. Do you who remember knows? the? Do you remember year that the three of us? This was before Michaela. The three of us just decided to do that episode like on a whim. Do you remember this? That's yeah, where it came from. Yeah. No, no, we no, we had recorded our like regular. We did episode, record before, and then we were like thinking about our schedules coming up, and we, without warning, just did the next one that we night. Did. Oh. oh wow. So we all like got out a list of movies that came out and like quickly went over and picked our favorite. That was the first one, really? Like that, 2019 oh, or something. 2018? Me. 2017. I think so. Like, and wow. now I study for it for like weeks. <laughs> like, yeah. We're now we, yeah. Now we're like, How do prepa- I feel about everything? Now we like prepare. And back then we were like, oh, well, I liked The Witch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been watching like three movies a night to make sure right? I see everything. Yeah. yeah. That was the first one. We were very unprepared. Well, yeah. I don't remember no. that, but that's yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go back and listen to it because yeah. I'm sure it's like three hours long. I think, long. Yeah, I think it was I mean, like, still yeah. really long. Pretty back long. in the day, yeah. they used to be very long. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've gotten it down to about uh, a little over two hours. Like hours. No, a little over, a little over two hours. Yeah. Right? Two and a yeah. half hours, probably. Yeah, we're getting better. Yeah, right, well, <laughs> in our in our untetheredness. Yeah. I hope that you'll join us for this. It Please promises do. to be a big event. 
So <laughs> tune it's always, in. It's always fun. Yeah. You never know what to expect. Yeah. yeah and you might hear about a movie that uh, you didn't know about before. So. <laughs> like Fingers Zola. crossed. Like Zola. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you for listening. We hope you'll join us. And until next week. The Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year if, if you're listening to us. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, to all, good night. And <laughs> the basement done. is going dark.